In this video, I want to do some examples of applying the fundamental homomorphism theorem. When we want to show G is isomorphic to H, if I have two groups that are isomorphic to each other, well then we construct our isomorphism F going from G to H. And then we show this is injective, surjective, and that the identity holds. However, when the domain is a quotient group, we have two approaches. The first way would be to define a function f going from g mod n to h and prove it is a well-defined, a homomorphism and a bijection. Proving the well-defined part of this right here can be really, really tricky. So we also have another way to do this. The second way, the way we'll use, we're going to define a function f going from g to h. We need to prove it's a homomorphism, a surjection, and that the kernel of this function f is equal to n. And when we have that, we can use the fundamental homomorphism theorem to say that then g mod n is isomorphic to h. So let's start looking at some examples of this. Let's consider the function f going from z6 to z3 given by this function here. So 0 goes to 0, 1 goes to 1, 2 goes to 2, 3 goes to 0, 4 goes to 1, and 5 goes to 2. We can see pretty easily that this is a surjective homomorphism. And we can also see the kernel of f, the things that map to the identity, is going to consist of 0 and 3. This is equivalently the subgroup generated by 3 in Z6. So now, using my fundamental homomorphism theorem, I can say Z6 mod the subgroup generated by 3 is isomorphic to Z3. Next, let's look at a function f that goes from G cross H to H. So the input is ordered pairs, the first coordinate in my group G, the second coordinate in my group Y. We're going to map it onto my group H. We're going to define this as f of x comma y is equal to y. So we're just going to map an ordered pair to its second coordinate. We can prove that this is a surjective homomorphism pretty easily. I'm not going to go through those steps, but it's really easy. You can prove your homomorphism identity, and it's clearly surjective since the identity comma y always maps to y. What about the kernel? Well, in this case, my first coordinate can be anything, but my second coordinate needs to be the identity in h, such that x is any element in g. So I can let my first coordinate range over all of my group g. My second coordinate will be the identity. Then we have g cross h over, I'm going to abbreviate this as g comma e, will be isomorphic to h. So I've essentially kind of factored out that first coordinate, that first group g. I'm going to start by listing out the elements of z3 cross z3. We have 0, 0, 0, 1. 0, 2. We also have 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2. And then we have 2, 0, 2, 1, and 2, 2. We want 0, 0 to be in my kernel, 1, 1 to be in my kernel, and 2, 2 to be in my kernel, so all three of those should map to 0. Let's suppose 1, 0 maps to 1. Since 1, 0 plus 1, 0 is 2, 0, that should map to 1 plus 1, or 2. We also know that 1, 0 plus 0, 1 is 1, 1. So 1 plus what is 0? That would then need to map to 2. 2, 0 plus 0, 1 
is 2, 1. 2 plus 2 needs to go to 1. 0, 1 plus 0, 1 is 0, 2, so 2 plus 2 is 1. Finally, 1, 0 plus 0, 2 is 1, 2, and we have that 1 plus 1 is 2. So this would define the mapping that shows that Z3 is isomorphic to Z3 cross Z3 mod K, where K is given here. Let's show that Q star mod the subgroup generated by negative 1 is isomorphic to Q plus. So as a reminder, Q star is all the non-zero rationals, and Q plus is all of the positive rationals. This means I need a function f going from Q star onto Q plus, so from the non-zero rationals to the positive rationals. And I need this to be a surjection, a homomorphism, and I need the kernel to be the subgroup generated by negative 1. Let's think about this kernel a little bit more. It would have negative 1. Q star is a group under multiplication, so we would have negative 1 times negative 1, which is 1. And we can see that any product of these two elements is now in this set. So we only need negative 1 and 1 to map to the identity in this function. The most obvious function that would map all rational, all non-zero rationals to the positive rationals would be the absolute value function. It is very clearly onto since if we want to pick a positive rational number, we can map that number onto itself. So if we pick an x in q plus, we can just say f of x is equal to x. We also need to show it's, an, it's a homomorphism. So f of xy is the absolute value of xy. This is the same as the absolute value of x times the absolute value of y. So that's the same thing as f of x, f of y. So it is a homomorphism. In addition, the kernel of this homomorphism will be negative 1 to 1. The only thing that's going to map onto 1 is going to be negative 1 or 1. And so my fundamental homomorphism theorem now says that q star mod the kernel will be isomorphic to Q plus.